I'm Keith Kaplan. I'm a surgical pathologist with uh, interest in informatics and for some time have been involved with telepathology, image analysis, and whole slide imaging. I think the technology affords pathologists a lot of opportunities that we don't get with a glass slide alone at our own microscope. So to that extent, I thought I would approach a liver biopsy with you all using path exchange as a medium and a tool to show you my approach to liver biopsies and how one can navigate an image on the screen to arrive at the appropriate diagnosis. My interest in pathology informatics started at Walter Reed Army Medical Center about 12 years ago where there was a need and a necessity for using digital images in a distributed environment to arrive at the appropriate diagnosis and referral of patient care. Whole slide imaging and image analysis affords pathologists an opportunity to view images much like they would their own microscope but with a greater degree of accuracy and efficiency. I follow developments of all of these happenings with whole slide imaging, image analysis, and telepathology at my digital pathology blog at tissuepathology.com. Using path exchange, I'd like to show you a liver biopsy and my approach to diagnosis of liver biopsies. This particular case that I'll show you is from a 50-year-old female who presented to her primary care physician with abdominal pain and was found to have abnormal liver function studies which is a common indication for liver biopsy. I'd like to show you her case and describe my approach uh, to arrive at the appropriate diagnosis. path exchange, I'm going to go ahead and log into a liver biopsy case that I've had scanned in and show you that case and my approach to liver diagnosis. Using path exchange, I'll go ahead and uh, click my mouse to open up this case for viewing. Once the case is launched, you can see a low power overview of the entire slide to ensure that you have the entire slide scanned and are looking at all the tissue represented on that slide. At this point, when assessing a liver biopsy, it's important to assess the adequacy of the biopsy, and generally that's done by looking for portal tracks. And generally, uh, a minimum of four portal tracks is required for an adequate liver biopsy to arrive at the appropriate diagnosis. I've identified one here that I can zoom in on higher power and show you. And within this portal area, you can see branches of the hepatic artery, bile ducts, and portal vein. Once I've assessed that my biopsy is adequate by having this uh, adequate number of portal areas, and this case has been previously scanned and it was an adequate biopsy, it's important to remember to systematically review the entire biopsy in some way, shape, or form. And generally, I look at my portal areas and assess them towards a central vein. And I'll show you that here. So at about a 10x magnification, you can see a portal area and a neighboring central vein. And again, systematically, it doesn't matter whether you look at the portal areas or the central areas, and these are oftentimes called zone one, meaning periportal, and perivenular or central zone areas are commonly referred to as zone three, and the mid-zonal areas are commonly referred to as zone two. So at this point, it's important to look at the constituent elements of the portal tracks, assess for the presence or absence of each of the respective elements, the presence or absence of inflammation, degree of inflammation, and work your way out from the portal areas through the lobule towards the central vein if you prefer, you may go from the central vein towards the portal area, but in, in a systemic fashion, try to evaluate each respective lobule within the biopsy. So if we go back to our portal area that I showed you previously, on a slightly higher magnification, you can appreciate a few inflammatory cells within the portal area, perhaps even at this low power, a plasma cell within the portal area and not a whole lot of interface activity, meaning there aren't lymphocytes within the portal area extending beyond the limiting plate, 
coming in direct contact with surrounding hepatocytes. At this point, generally, I work my way through the lobule towards the central vein and look at the hepatocytes, the absence or presence of any pigments, any exogenous substances, and in this case, you can appreciate uh, the presence of fatty uh, liver change within the lobules. So you can see this degree of macrovesicular steatosis within the hepatocytes and some scattered inflammatory activity within the lobules as well as the sinusoids. And again, it's important to make sure that you assess all the elements as you go through the lobule. So we also look at the sinusoids and the Cooper cells as we're going through our biopsy. So we have some port uh, portal inflammation, a little bit of lobular inflammation, and some macrovesicular fat. So it appears that we have a steatohepatitis within this liver biopsy. As I work my way through, I look at the central veins and, and make sure that the central veins are present and absent and that the architecture is in fact intact. And look at the structure of the central vein and look for any changes around the central vein in terms of venous congestion or dilatation, of which there is none in this biopsy. And while I'm doing that, I'm also assessing the lobule for the absence or presence of uh, apoptotic bodies, meaning hepatocellular damage or turnover, to assess the, any degree of injury within the lobule and look for both acute and chronic changes within the lobule. Once you have a sense of the overall disease process, you can oftentimes categorize the disease within a few categories and then try to confirm or refute that diagnosis as you systematically review the liver biopsy. Of note in this case, as is oftentimes the case with liver biopsies, there may be more than one diagnosis. I had this case scanned in in particular because there's a finding in this biopsy as you move through the lobule that I can show you here even off the slide overview. We're in a periportal area here with a bile duct present right here and a periportal granuloma. So there may oftentimes be multiple uh, diagnoses in a single liver biopsy that may be contributing to the patient's enzyme abnormalities or clinical condition or reason for presentation. So in this case, we have both a mixed steatohepatitis as well as an isolated granuloma within this particular core, and other granulomas were identified in other sections as well. Most of the granulomas appear to be periportal in distribution without injuring the bile duct. So we're not dealing with a cholestatic disease process, but rather an isolated granuloma, uh, or what some would categorize as a granulomatous hepatitis, uh, due to a wide variety of causes, including systemic diseases such as sarcoid, infectious etiologies, and sometimes drug. So these are uh, processes that need to be evaluated further and correlated with the clinical history, uh, whether or not they represent a significant problem or sometimes an incidental finding within a liver biopsy. But I think you're, as you approach liver biopsies and systematically review them through adequacy, the appropriateness of the biopsy, the disease process that's occurring, whether it's acute or chronic, it's always important to remember that there may be oftentimes more than one specific diagnosis contributing uh, to the patient's uh, health care problem. So that's a very quick overview of general approach to liver biopsy and important points to take home in terms of approach to arrive at a specific diagnosis or diagnoses as in this case. Thank you. So the diagnosis in this case is a mixed mild steatohepatitis and granulomatous hepatitis. The etiology of the granulomas would have to be worked up further to determine the etiology and determine if this is a contributing factor to the patient's symptoms and uh, reason for visit. Digital pathology is an enabling technology that will allow pathologists to share, communicate, and exchange information seamlessly as we care for our patients. You can connect with me at pathexchange.org or visit my blog at digitalpathologyblog at tissuepathology.com. Thank you.